Welcome to the virtue trains the trainer course uh, to the lecture on varieties of goodness in research. This lecture is prepared uh, based on presentation of Professor Jan Helga Solbach with inputs from Dr. Rosemary Bernabe and myself. So let's start with a pre preliminary question. And uh, I would ask you to think about, uh, do, you, do you know someone you would call a good, really good researcher excelling in his or her work as a member of an academic environment? And the second question is, what do you think, what makes this person a good researcher? If I think about my academic environment, I, I can mention several people for sure. And I would invite you to think together what, what we mean by the word good in this context and what are different varieties of goodness in research environment. Our objectives in this lecture is are uh, to understand the multidimensional nature of goodness, to understand how the different typologies of goodness are relevant and important to the work of a researcher, to relate the different typologies of goodness to research integrity ideals and issues, and to reflect on one's own conceptions of goodness and their application in research. So what is goodness? And uh, we'll, we'll look at the at philosophy of uh, Finnish philosopher Georg Hendrik von Vrich in this context. In his book, The Varieties of Goodness, von Vrich advocates that a useful preliminary to the study of the word good is to compile a list of familiar uses and try to group them under some main headings. So when we speak about goodness, we can look at using how we use the word good in our everyday language and everyday environment. And we can imagine many uses. We can, we can speak about good hammer, a good road. We speak about good physician or good politician, good eyes, good sight, good memory, good heart, good taste, good day, good opportunity, also good advice, good luck, good news, and a good person. So Wricht uh, tries to categorize these uses of the word good in several varieties or, uh, or types of goodness. So first type of goodness is, is uh, when we use the word good as in expressions, good knife, good hammer, or a good road. And uh, the, von Richt says that the first group contains the uses of good of instrumental character. That's, we speak of a good knife, a good hammer, and other artifacts which are used as, as means or as instruments for various purposes. And of course, we can find this use of the word good and this type of goodness also in research. Uh, instrumental goodness represents uh, a form of goodness of evident re relevance uh, within science and research uh, when we think about good research equipment or good laboratories or good IT and software. And when we look at the European Code of Conduct for Research Integrity, we can find uh, mentions of instrumental goodness also there. Like in uh, point two, uh, point one uh, about research environment, it said that research institutions and organizations support proper infrastructure for the management and protection of data and research materials in all uh, their forms that are necessary for reproducibility, traceability, and um, accountability. So the, the code, the ECOC, says that good research environment means also instrumental goodness, good instruments, in this case, for management and protection of, of data and research materials. So 
that was the first type of goodness. But of course, this doesn't imply that goodness in research can be fully sorted out by confining uh, our investigation to an instrumental dimension. It's not to, it's not enough to have uh, good instruments in research. There are some other features which are very important for good research. So here we come to second type of goodness, which may be described uh, when we refer to such uses as uh, of, of the word good as a good carpenter, a good chess player, a good politician, a good teacher. And uh, von Richt um, names this type of goodness technical goodness. So a common characteristic of, of this use of good is that we speak about, about people who are good at something. And it's some activity or art for which a person may possess a natural talent, but in which uh, she will also have to undergo some special training before she can excel in it. So as I said, Richt refers to this kind of excellence characteristic as technical goodness. And um, again, we can think about research, research here and ask what exactly makes a researcher good in the technical sense of the word. Uh, if we think about initial phase of research, for example, then the ability to identify the kind of questions and methodologies which are best suited to research, uh, uh, to research a particular problem represents a form of goodness of this kind, of technical kind. Also, um, in the process of data collection and analysis, very important is the ability to sift through large amounts of carefully collected data uh, and provide interpretations, uh, which are uh, both plausible and fruitful. So uh, if, if a researcher can do that, we would say that he or she possess technical goodness. And again, if we go to the European Code of Conduct for Research Integrity, we can find technical goodness there. Uh, in, in the point 2.2, training, supervision, and mentoring, we see uh, the, the uh, technical goodness involved. Research institutions and organizations ensure that researchers receive rigorous training in research design, methodology, and analysis. The third type of goodness, it shows up if we speak about good lung, good eyes, good sight, good memory. And uh, von Richt uh, speaks about this type of goodness as functional, or he also mentioned the word medical goodness. So these are uses of good as an attribute of organs of the body and faculties of mind. For example, when we speak of a good heart, good eyes, good sight, good memory, you might wonder where we can, where we can find this, this type of goodness in research, but I would suggest to think in uh, analogies. So Richt uses analogy with functions of a body. An organ which performs its proper function well is said to be good. Poor organs function in a way which affect health adver uh, adversely and may cause an illness. So I think we can draw an analogy with good functioning of research community here. And uh, looking at the European Code of Conduct for Research Integrity, uh, we can find their functional goodness in a section about training, supervision, and mentoring which says that senior researchers, research leaders and supervisors mentor their team members and offer specific guidance and training to properly develop, design and structure their research activity and to foster a culture of research integrity. So it's about, um, about the research team or, or academic community as an organism uh, which functions in a good, in a good way, thanks to the uh, 
its its parts or organs functioning well too. Uh, and I, I think we can find functional goodness also in uh, another part of uh, European Code of Conduct for Research Integrity, uh, safeguards where um, the code speaks about research, uh, researchers having due regard for the health, safety, and welfare of the community collaborators and others connected with their research, which is uh, more, uh, more straightforward um, use of this function, functional or medical goodness in saying that each researcher has to take care about good functioning of his or her colleagues and community as a whole. Fourth type of goodness, which is characterized by such uses of good as uh, good feeling, good smell, good meal, and uh, von Richt uh, calls uh, this names this type of goodness as hedonic goodness. He says he says uh, it's a type of goodness when we speak of a good smell, good taste, good meal, good wine. A good holiday or time, good weather. And uh, in research environment, I think you all know the pleasure of having a paper accepted for publication, uh, which would probably also fit very well into this group. Or if you have a good colleagues and you enjoy time uh, you spend with your colleagues, uh, also in, in doing research. So there are certain elements of hedonic goodness in research environment. This represents a dimension of goodness that deserves more attention uh, than hinter, uh, he have to given because researchers uh, live substantial parts of their lives in ambiences not only characterized by the freedom to seek knowledge, academic freedom, but also by to competition, temporary forms of insecurity and uh, by ignorance. So to make such ambiences flourish requires that attention is paid to the cognitive needs and intellectual aspirations of individual researchers but also to their need for being taken care of uh, in periods of envy, frustration, insecurity, and pain. And that's kind of support a research community can provide. Um, in the European Code of Conduct for Research Integrity, uh, in my view, we can find a hedonic goodness in, in a section about publication and dissemination. Uh, where it says that authors acknowledge important work and intellectual contributions of others, including collaborators, assistants, and, and funders. So by acknowledging the work of, of our colleagues, we uh, give them this pleasure. We uh, ensure hedonic goodness in their lives. The fifth type of goodness characterized by such uses of good as good plan, good opportunity, good advice, good luck. Uh, and in Richt's uh, writings, it's called utilitarian or beneficial goodness. So when we speak of a good plan, a good opportunity, a good advice, we are usually thinking of something which is useful or advantageous for some purpose or person. And of course, we can find this type of goodness in research. Just think about public benefit, uh, commercialization, or patenting, and you will you will uh, find this uh, element of utilitarian goodness in research. And again, if you look at you at the European Code of Conduct for Research Integrity, uh, there is utilitarian goodness incorporated. Uh, in a section on publication and dissemination, it says that authors ensure that their work is made available to colleagues in a timely, open, transparent, and accurate manner, unless otherwise agreed, and uh, are honest to their in their communication to the general public uh, and in traditional and social media. So it's about uh, 
publication of research results uh, to make them available and usable for other researchers and the broader community. And last but not least, the sixth type of goodness, which is uh, showing up when we use good in such expressions as good person, good act, good heart. And uh, this uh, form of use of good refers to matters of, uh, of character. So uses of good related to moral life. And the question we can ask here is how a person can be good and do good to others. If you look for moral goodness, this type of goodness in research, it's quite clear that moral goodness is necessary for maintaining confidence between individuals in a research ambience or between research communities as well as between individual researchers, research communities, their research subjects, and the community at large. And it's, it's about trust and trustworthiness of research and research community. And of course, the whole European Code of Conduct for Research Integrity is about moral goodness. We can see it at the beginning of the code uh, in a section on principles, which starts uh, with a sentence, good research practices are based on fundamental principles of research integrity. And that's very clear incorporation of moral goodness here. But also further in the text, you can find many places uh, mentioning moral goodness, like in, in a section on, on uh, safeguards, that researchers handle research subjects by uh, be the human, uh, animal, cultural, biologic, uh, environmental, or physical with respect and care and in accordance with legal and ethical provisions. So um, what could be consequences uh, of each type of good if, if each type of goodness is not present. That would be a question I, I would ask you to think about uh, at the end of this presentation. Imagine if, if there would be no technical goodness in, in uh, research, what would happen? Or if there would be no moral goodness in, in research, what would happen then? Or if there would be lack of utilitarian goodness in, in research, what would be consequences? And uh, I would also invite you to think about the question, is it possible to teach or develop this type of goodness? And if yes, how? How you would teach each of these types of goodness to your students, to your uh, trainees to your colleagues. So I will leave you with these two questions and I really hope you will find uh, very good answers to these questions. So thank you and uh, good luck with uh, your reflections on six types of goodness. <laughs>